everyone! So I'm finally back with another career-related video. This time I'm going to be talking about my software engineering bootcamp experience. It has taken me a bit of time to film this video because I've been so busy with work. But I'm recovering from a cold so I finally have time to sit down and talk about this. So if you see me looking down, I'm actually just looking at my laptop for my notes and yeah, let's begin. So the first question would be, what bootcamp did I take and how much did it cost? So I did a General Assembly 3-month bootcamp. It's a full-time software engineering immersive program and I did my bootcamp in Singapore. So it cost 14,650 Singapore dollars with GST included. But in Singapore, there's actually TIPP funding by the government. So TIPP being Tech Immersion and Placement Program funding. And the Singapore government actually subsidized about 9,100 and Singapore dollars for this bootcamp. So in total, I paid about 6,000 Singapore dollars or 5938.50 to be exact. Now the thing about, TI, um, about getting TIPP funding is that you have to pass the course, otherwise you have to pay the remaining fees. So the second question would be what was the syllabus like? So before you start the program, you have to do some online coursework, uh, which is basically to just get you familiar with basic HTML and CSS. And if you ever played around with block skins before in the past, I think it will be a piece of cake for you. Yep. So when you start the modules, um, you will actually have four modules, like I mentioned. I think on the GA website, it mentions that uh, you will learn the front-end development, full-stack development, front-end frameworks, as well as APIs and full-stack development. But let me elaborate a little bit more about what I really learned during, uh, during those modules. So for, the, so for each module, it's about two weeks, and at the end of the two weeks, you will have about a week to submit a project, a personal project. Now for the project, you can use any sort of frameworks or technology that you have learned by yourself. But generally, I would say to pass, you just have to make sure that you apply what you have learned in those two weeks uh, into your project. So for example, the first module that I learned was uh, generally about front end, which is JavaScript. So at the end of that two weeks, my project was a JavaScript Pokemon-esque um, Pokemon style game using HTML canvas and CSS. So that was the first module. So for the second module, we learned about front-end frameworks such as React and Redux, um, as well as some CSS frameworks such as uh, Bootstrap. Generally in the bootcamp, they taught Bootstrap. Um, and, but yeah, like it's up to you to go and exploit um, for yourself. So I would strongly suggest to do that as well. Um, because you'll probably need to learn as much as you can. So yeah, we I used Tailwind CSS um, as well as React to complete my second project, which was an application that gave you information on currently airing TV shows. So very net Netflix-esque design, um, but I was but it was basically displaying the timings of the different TV shows uh, using one of the APIs. So yeah, for the third module, they mentioned that it's full stack um, development. But basically, you learn kind of more about Express, Node, as well as um, maybe MongoDB. So different types of databases that you would use in a full stack development. And you learn a little bit about authentication, such as JWT, which I didn't really understand then. Um, but then I actually got to use it in my workplace as well. So that was useful. Yeah, so um, at the end of the third module, there was actually a group project. So this one, you have to collaborate with your some other classmates. So make sure you uh, make friends with your classmates. And it's very important to have a good support system. Uh, and your classmates will really help with that as well during the entire course. Yeah, so we, did, we had a group project and we basically did like an um, uh, application where people uh, could hire freelance tutors. Yeah, so it was trying to build a more an application that was applicable in real life. I think that was the requirement of the project. For the third module, also kind of learn how to build your own APIs. So by the time you reach the fourth module, you it kind of wraps everything up, and um, we learned a little bit more about using Python, um, Django, as well as uh, PostgreSQL. Yeah. So by the end of the fourth project, you would have to create your own personal like application. This could be on anything, you can use any 
frameworks or any technology that you kind of have learned. And like I mentioned before, it's actually good to explore, but of course there's also a time crunch. So yeah, just um, for me, I use Django PostgreSQL, React, Node and Tailwind CSS to create kind of an e-commerce application at the end. Yeah. And yeah, that's kind of like the four modules in detail. Um, but yeah, just comment down below if you have any questions that you want to ask. Now on to the question that I think a lot of people ask, which is what's my review of the bootcamp? Well, there are pros and cons, of course. Um, maybe let's, let me start with the pros. So what I really liked was that there was a dedicated career coach for every class. Basically, the career coach would come in to the classes um, and she would give advice on, for example, how to improve your LinkedIn, which is very important. Um, and also you could book one-on-one -on -one sessions with the career coach. And to me, that was very useful because I needed help with crafting my resume, especially since I was making a huge career change, jumping from education into tech. So for me, I really appreciated my career, having the career coach to help me with that. Yeah. So another, another good thing was that they had a career day. And basically what would happen during the career day is that they invited a bunch of companies who knew you were software engineering bootcamp students and were still willing to hire. So basically, uh, so I thought that career fair was good because some of my classmates actually got hired from that career fair. So in terms of the cons, I think to land a job as a junior developer, usually you will need to pass two interviews, right? One is the technical interview and one is the HR interview. Now, the career coach can help with the HR interview, but they cannot help with the technical interview. So the technical interview is really up to you. And the problem is a lot of the technical interviews, they will ask about data structures and algorithms. And that is, that is something that is not covered in the bootcamp. It is packed as a self-study online module that you can take after the bootcamp. Um, however, I do think it's a very huge topic and I wish that they covered it more in the bootcamp because that would actually help a lot during the technical interview. And doing it self-study um, was not the easy easiest and you needed a lot more time um, in order to prep for the interviews yeah so i wish that was something that what well, they gone through they had gone through in the boot camp and to me i think that was one major con also we kind of breeze through like the topic about unit testing um, but basically if you are interested in any dev ops or you know more back-end roles i think that's actually important and i wish we kind of covered more about that um, in the boot camp as well yeah of course, I understand that there's only three months, so there's definitely a limit to how much they can cover. Um, and a lot has to be self-learned or self-taught. And I mean, I think that holds true for software engineering as a whole. You do need to continuously learn by yourself. But I do wish that there was kind of more emphasis put onto data structures and algorithms. Um, because you definitely need a longer time to kind of be good at it and practice. Yeah, so I really wish that they kind of spend more, put more emphasis on data structure and algorithms or at least go, and go through that during the course so that by the end of the three months, you are actually ready to start looking for a job. Um, otherwise, you have to really speed learn data structures and algorithms, uh, which I would say is not the best idea. Yeah, you really need a little bit more time to kind of digest and uh, do it well in order to pass the tech interviews. All in all, do I recommend attending a software engineering bootcamp? Well, yes, I would say it did provide me with the fundamentals as a junior friend and developer. Without the bootcamp, I would never have been able to make the switch. But I think the keyword is that it gives you the skills of being a junior friend and developer. So I would say it's comparable with kind of what the interns come in with. Um, interns who are doing computer science or info systems, for example, what they come in with, I would say it's comparable to that. But you will have to learn on the job very quickly and I would say what you learn from the bootcamp is a lot more front-end focus. I do have friends and colleagues who did the same bootcamp and eventually went on to do more back-end stuff. But I would say it's um, a lot more self-studying and you will need a lot more practice. Um, it, ultimately, it's a preference whether you want to do front-end or back-end or full stack, which a lot of companies ask for. So yeah, I would say it's still a lot. You will definitely have to constantly learn and you know, bear in mind that you're competing with a lot of younger folks. But I think to me, it's not about age, but whether you are really able to continuously learn and improve yourself. Yeah, 
But what I would say is that I wish I did a lot more research before I jumped into the bootcamp because there are many, many types of different bootcamps um, out there. And I would say, especially to do more research about the industry and see what skills I needed kind of before I joined the bootcamp. Um, I would say I didn't know about the variety of programs out there because there are some programs that actually allow you to do an internship or they partner with a company, for example. And yeah, there are some other um, boot camps out there that kind of go more into, you know, data structures, data structures and algorithms. Um, yeah, so there are many, many types of programs out there. So I would say to do your research first and hopefully this video would be able to help some of you as well. Um, and perhaps uh, I would think one good thing would be to attend meetups by junior devs, SG or previously when I was in a different uh, field, I didn't know there was such a thing. But in Singapore or in the tech world, there are a lot of meetups where you can meet people who are, you know, uh, developers or you can meet people who are different, like who hold different roles in the industry. So I think it's very useful to go into that and then see if you want to join the tech industry or you want to be a software engineer. Yeah. And even if you want to be a software engineer, what sort of software engineer do you kind of want to be? Do you kind of want to go into more like perhaps more AI or do you want to go uh, more into front end, back end or full stack? Um, or actually do you prefer more data science, etc.? Yeah, the tech industry is very huge and I think it's important to do more research or I wish on hindsight that I did more research about that. Um, yeah, and last but not least, I think networking is very important because my first job came from networking and I think that's something that um, even after you get a book, um, after you do your bookend, I think networking is the most important way for you to get your first job. So yeah, if you have any questions, do feel free to leave a comment and thank you for watching. Please do like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. And yeah. Do let me know if you have any questions that you would like me to do in the next video. Thanks. Bye.